the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always Namaste friends <clears throat> so today is chapter 9 in uh, NumPy and I think the total chapter in Python so far is 48 <clears throat> um, you know so we did see about the arrays array shape reshape in the last few lectures so in today's lecture we'll be seeing about the array iterator we have already discussed about the array iterator <clears throat> we know what an iterator is like and it is you know going through elements one by one is called the iterator so in this case we'll be dealing with multi-dimensional arrays in numpy okay it's basically a loop in the python so you know if we can actually iterate a 1d array it will go through each element one by one so let's actually try this like always and let's actually see how we can you know uh, produce everything so this is the thing so what we have is we importing numpy and then we are taking an array this is a one dimensional array and then we say for x in the array print the entire x so we are actually giving this now if we actually run this one two three so it goes by iteration so one after one after one so this is like very simple uh, you know do while loop all right so similarly we can actually iterate a two dimensional array because right now this is a one dimensional array and we can also iterate a two dimensional array <clears throat> so the same thing as i said the two dimensional array is like this and we actually print x you know this is a loop condition that we give and when you run it actually gives you the same so this is a two dimensional array so you know if you want to return the actual values <clears throat> so you know there's something called as a scalar and if we have to iterate the arrays in each dimension okay so let's actually see this and let's actually see what is the difference here all right so if you want to return the actual values then it, there is something called as a scalar okay scalar or scalar it's the same import numpy smp this is a two-dimensional array so for x in this array okay which is all these things and for y in this x we say print y okay so let's see what this gives now see this one two three four five six so this is a scalar and this gives see the same thing we actually printed this it actually printed one two three four five six so it gave a two dimensional array but it is not like this but if you want like this then there is something called as a scalar <clears throat> and this scalar is something like you have to do with so then only it is going to give you iteration one two three four five six okay so for x in this array and for y in this x we actually print text given the fact this two dimensional we have to create something like this for it to actually split like this all right all right so now if you want to do a three dimensional okay so we did one dimensional we did two dimensional now we are going to go into the three dimensional so three dimensions basically we create three things okay so one two so this is more than a three dimensional and then we say for x in this we say print this is a two represents this two 2d and then we say print x let's see what it does see this is a two dimensional okay exactly like what we have actually seen here and this is not a scalar so this actually represents a two dimensional so this is the three dimensional this thing and you know if you want to return uh, this thing we go for a scalar and that is exactly what we actually saw so we should be familiar right now everything is the same but for this x in this array y in this x <clears throat> and then z in y then we say print so first this you put this in this bucket you put this in this bucket so now if you see it will go from 1 to 12 all right let's actually run and see see 1 to 12 it is not a magic it is just like a logic and then the moment you get one everything is the same so we can actually iterate our array using nd iter this nd iter is a function that can be used from a very basic to very advanced iteration okay it also solves some basic issues which we face in iteration and we can actually see through the example okay so we did a scalar and we also saw why a scalar is actually used so in this basic loops if you want one one this thing then we go for a scalar and that is exactly what i show so for n of the loops okay so this is it will be very difficult if you keep on telling for x and y for y in z print z now say suppose there is a four dimensional five dimensional six dimensional for how long you'll be writing right so that is going to be very difficult right so for very high dimension is going to be difficult so in that case what we would do is just see this magic I take this I do this 
whether it is three dimensional, four dimensional, five dimensional, it does not matter. I say for x in np dot nd iter of this array, and then I say print x. Now you see the magic. See, I need not do go for a scalar. The scalar is another way, but the original way is <coughs> nd iter, and this is exactly what I told you. From the basic to the advanced, I can use this. Now I trust this made this clear. All right. So when you want to iterate arrays with different data types, we can use OP data types. You can use arguments. Okay. Uh, we can use a different data types. The NumPy does not change the data type. Okay. There is always a buffer. Uh, you you can just read this. This is just like a pure text on some knowledge purpose. So you can just read this. Um, and we can just go to the next slide. Now let's see what this buffer is and let's exactly see what this guy is doing and then we can actually come back to this. So here we go, here we go. I have a one dimensional array and then I say nd iter because the nd iter is I know it is going to be buffered <clears throat> and then I say flags buffered and this type is yes and then I say print x. So if I actually run this so yeah, so b of 1, b of 2, b of 3. So that is exactly what it is giving. It is like an iteration. So this is what I'm actually doing. So now what does this thing say? We can use a type argument and pass it to the expected data type to change the data type of the element while we are iterating. So if you want to change a data type, you can use this. The numpy does not change the data type of the element in place. Okay, so it needs some other space to perform this action. And that extra space is called the buffer. Okay. And in order to enable that in the ND identifier, we pass flags equals buffer. So let's actually talk, right? You can change a data type, integer, varchar, you know, you can change a data type. But what actually happens is it is by OP underscore D types. But what actually happens is the numpy does not change it accordingly. So it needs some space and that space is called the buffered space. Okay, so in order to do it in the nd iter, we actually do it in this manner. Okay, nd iter, we say array and then we say flags equals buffered. With this, it actually gives you an opportunity to change the data type. So the op data type of yes and then you actually print this yes. Now if you see that is exactly what we did. Does it make sense now? This is changing the data type. <clears throat> Now, if you want to iterate with different step size, we can use filtering followed by the iteration. So let's actually take this. We import, this is the array, this is a two dimensional, and this is what it is. We actually filter. We, this is a filter criteria, and let's actually see what this guy does. We take one, three, five, and seven. So basically, we are filtering by two, two with this array. So one, we lock, we, you know, one, this is a second, this is a second, this is a second. So that is what we are taking. Had it been two, four, <clears throat> it'll be six, eight. But in this case, since it is actually starting here, one, three, five, seven. That is exactly what we are doing. All right. Super. So there is something called as an enumerated iteration. So we did this IPD types. Now, what is this ND numerate? The enumeration means mentioning sequence number of something one by one. Sometimes we require a corresponding index of the element while iterating the NDE numerate method, which can be used in this cases. So let's actually take this example and let's see what this thing is. I have this. Let's actually read this code. I import my numpy. This is a one dimensional. I say for idx x in nd array and then I say print idx comma this x. So let's see what happens. See, I get 0 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 3. So this is the sequence number. All right. And this is exactly what we are doing, the sequence number. Now, now does it make sense? There's a sequence number. This is exactly what we are doing. All right. Super. We can, you know, in this case, for the sequence number, we can also take this and we can do this here. This is a two dimensional. Same for this NDX and in this case with this thing and then we are actually printing it. See, 
since it's a two dimensional it is giving 0 0 0 1 0 2 0 3 1 0 and stuff of that nature but everything is the same since the two dimension it actually goes in this manner all right <clears throat> i trust you would have actually enjoyed this numpy iterator which is chapter 9 in the numpy uh, if you have any questions kindly contact me i'll actually try to explain to the best of my abilities uh, like always, I would like to thank two persons. One is you for giving me a golden time and the other is my wife Jayashi following me to follow my passion. So till we see you next time, take care, cheers and thank you.